time to go viral. I'm homicidal, I'm killing all my rivals. I'm the man, shit, I put that on the Bible. I spot off my target, cause you know I got the title. Hey, I'm a Mac too. I told baby, shake that ass like she Apple. She said it's real, so she got my name tattooed. House full, so I hit it in the back room. Baby, baby said she needed now, peep the urgency. I want a little Kim before she had the surgery. Leg spread on that hardcore poster. She love twerking, she just do it for the coach. Big dog, big dog, bull massive. Six Trey Chevrolet, I'm classic. Yeah. All these niggas mad at me, that's tragic. So? The main bitch in the bed, that's graphic. Yeah, we about to go viral. Go viral. Hey, hey. We about to go viral. What's the deal, people? It's your boy, the one and only. Your host that do the most, Mr. Viral himself, a.k.a. the villain. Because they hate me for my opinion. Welcome back to another episode of the Viral Way Podcast. Make sure y'all share, like, subscribe in the channel. Hit that like button, man. It's free. Showing love is free. As always, I got Cali the one in the building. The one, not the two, Mr. Lightskin himself. Come on, man. The Messiah, he out the country somewhere going viral the viral way. Y'all go out there, show him some love. You feel me? Happy Sea Day too, fool. Yeah. We see you out there going crazy. Big helicopters. You out there on big jet skis. He doing it big. Viral way lifestyle. Shout out my boy Ruckus too. He's somewhere screaming about Trump and Kamala. <laughs> so, you feel me? But man, we got a special guest in the building, man. This finna be one of them ones. On. High Power Fridays. Talk to me, man. We got the one and only Mr. Chairman Allen in the building. Man, bro. man what's the deal, bro? Man, I feel blessed, man. You go by Chairman Allen, right? Oh, you yes, got sir. you got another moniker. Nah, let yes, let them know all the monikers that you got. Um, Chairman Allen, that's it. That's okay, that's Chair, life, Chairman that's Allen. My title, that's my my embodiment of who I am is mm. Chairman. <laughs> My guy, a brief intermission. We got the Viral Way merch coming. You feel me? The order links will be up soon. Make sure y'all tap in. We got it in all flavors. We got the street wear. We got the classy wear. We got the sweatsuits coming. We got the bomber jackets. We got it all hey, coming, man. We got on, the man. fitters. We got the beat. <laughs> yeah. Y'all hey, tap in. Me. I ain't going to give them too much just yet. But y'all tap in and just know if it ain't got that official VW stitching, it's not official. The Viral Way. But man, what's the deal, man? I done seen you going viral on the internet yourself. I was actually ecstatic when you reached out because I was watching your videos like, damn, bro, it's tapped in. Bro, it's on the same frequency we on. Hey. I would love to connect with dude, but you know me, I'd be, I be in my own world, so I don't even be, be thinking to like reach out. So when you reached out, I'm like, damn, divine intervention. Let the people know a little bit about yourself, though, about your movement, what you got going on, where you come from. Talk to them. So I'm from California originally, Long Beach, 7th and Terminal. Um, Beach but, City, we in here. Come on, come on. Um, but... Moved to Chicago, I want to say now, now 14 years, uh, built a whole family out there. We got a, an amazing uh, community center organization. It's called Healthy Hood Chicago. Um, I'm the director of arts and culture. So all the educating that I do, all the programs that I build is all based in uh, the lens of liberation, but through creation. So um, we're people of color, people of culture, people of creation. It's how we talk. It's how we think. It's how we move. Like all of those things, it's uh, just how we divinely and inherently express ourselves. So I teach like the pathway to that. Okay. How did you get into that? What, what first started you off doing that? So, man, I used to be a professional dancer. Uh, my brother oh. and I, we, uh, you, you we gotta, started. You got to, you got to, Oh, you gotta go into detail, yeah, yeah, yeah. my my guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> go into detail, gang. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Pause. Yeah, yeah, you're not just gonna freeze yeah, yeah. by that. <laughs> so my brother and I, we started this dance crew called the Future Kings. Um, it's a hip hop dance crew. So okay, um, sure. it started with like like us just you know dancing, getting in. To like functions, you know, us being the dance homies, you know what I'm saying? It kind of like bypassed a lot of bullshit growing up. <laughs> yeah, um, and man, that that grew into something crazy. Started going viral on the internet. It was the YouTube era. I don't know if y'all y'all ever heard of the dance craze jerking. Yeah, yeah, of course. Come on, man. Okay. 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 Come on, man. We you from the man, man. You never know. Hey, I'll... shout out my boy Tay of Third, King of the Jerks. Oh, man. Come on, go crazy. Talk to him. <laughs> that's that's what's up. That that uh, that fills my heart. But um, yeah, that's where me and my brother started. Um, that kind of like took off, took its own life, and um, man, grew into something crazy. We moved out to Chicago with uh, this growing love that we had, and uh, man, transferred into choreography, and it was like. Man, it took us everywhere. We did America's Got Talent, went all the way to the semifinals. Um, they told my brother and my story pretty pretty amazingly. And um, from there, um, my brother and I, we locked in about uh, this idea of what we're doing with our platform. That's where we had some creative differences and we kind of separated our mm -hmm. ways. I opened up a community center in Chicago, well, on the border of Chicago. And um, 
opened up different spaces for it. Like there was a dance studio, there was a music studio, a clothing shop, a podcast room. Um, and the goal was to teach the youth how to monetize their craft. How do we make money off the cool shit we make? And um, how do we make it realistic? You know, operating in this box that that you know a lot of people don't necessarily um, they don't they don't chart these these this land yet because it wasn't realistic for marginalized people for mm -hmm. people of color. So, um, man, we started this space and it grew into some crazy shit. I met my wife; she had another space in in the city, and we just ended up uh, morphing together. And that's how we got the space that we have today. That's how we we, we moving. So, how'd you go from a crumper? Clown dancer, you know what I'm saying, to the revolutionary. Where did that transition take place? Because I feel like Chicago is one of those places uh, that definitely needs that. Absolutely. Like with all of the madness going on out there. I mean, we got FYBJ Maine. He, you know, he on his pushing peace shit right now. Oh, yeah. You see Lil Dirk getting into the religious shit. I don't know how real that I'm is. Man, how I got serious that thing. is. We'll, we'll talk but about we'll talk time. about that in a little bit. Let's stick with you right now. How did you get into that lane? Man, I think it's when I met my wife, bro. Um, I was very much in that creative realm. Every, even though I was teaching like empowerment values and all these things, like for for the soul, um, I didn't have enough political education to really feel comfortable in that environment. So when I met my wife, she was teaching me a lot of the history, a lot of like the language. I think that's the biggest thing I was missing, like the access to the language. And uh, once I started understanding that shit, bro, it, like shifted my mind. I watched this movie called Panther. It's the origin of the Black Panther Party in Oakland, California, from uh, Minister Huey P. Newton and um, Bobby Seale, the two the two founders of the Black Panther Party. And man, when I tell y'all, it, like, it hit me in the soul, bro. Like I was supposed to watch it again. The universe don't make mistakes. There was a reason that I was watching that shit, and um, it just it really solidified me in the work that I was doing. I was like, yo, this. I'm supposed to be doing this shit. This this was already this was foundation that was created far before my time here on earth. And it's only right that we pick it up. Cause if if not us, who? If not now, when? It's it's on us, bro. We the unks now. <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> like, like my kids say, unk. <laughs> Call bro, that's what we are, bro. Like sure. niggas, we, we used to be thinking like who's going to throw the bar barbecues and like why why we ain't having barbecues? We not throwing them shits, we bro. It's, them, we're yeah. in that position now. Like it's it's our time to start. You know, uh, setting the standard for everything, everything that we're doing, the movement, the celebration, the way we talk to each other, the way we we hold our families close, and we we put all that shit on presentation. That shit all gotta, you know what I'm saying? And we that's on us. I like that you pointed that out because people have a knack of saying, "Man, we need leaders. We need leaders." And I've said several times on this show, "Look around. The leaders is us. That's, it's our generation now. That's crazy. It ain't the, the older generation. They did what they could. It came and went. It's on us now. So you steady I, I look think, around for a leader. The leader's right there next to you. The leader is the man and the woman in the mirror. And not to cut you off, but I think when you look back in time and you realize how young those leaders were, there's really no excuse. Age is nothing but a number. So when you're able to put your mind to it, you could definitely do it. And I think definitely going back in time, looking at Fred Hampton for, you know, on, and since he was 21 years old, I mean... And he was leading a, a revolution. Died so at twenty. We could we could do it at at any age. It don't it don't matter. You don't have to be too old or you don't have to be too young. I think it's it's a fragile like concept when we think about how because I think about all the OGs that that have built the foundation. Again, mm -hmm. you know I'm I'm really connected with Chairman Fred Junior, his son, super amazing OG man. Um, we have some of my mentors are all Black Panthers, and um, I think about this idea. We were just talking about it earlier. Uh, these these older the the OGs just not being able to surrender or relinquish power to the youngins, and mm. I, I think that's like, uh, you know, a lack of trust. It's a lack of understanding with what the young ge generation is capable of. Like, there's a. It looks a different way to bro. It, it looks, looks so different. different. For us, you know, what it I mean? sounds yeah. different. It feels different, and like at some point, like you just said, the OGs were our age, and they had to like. Demand that shift. Demand that that shit to happen. And man, it's it's time that we stop talking about bringing young people to the table and like really, really having them in inside these conversations because that's how we build. Uh, KRS One said this bar, bro. I'm talking about this shit was a bar. He said, if older people don't listen to younger people, they'll be slower amongst other older people. If younger people don't listen to older people, they'll be slower against amongst other younger people. So like, it's this idea of like intergenerational exchanges in in every level like 
just like we got to, our young homies, they all got to respect the elders. The elders got to like listen to the youngins too. Cause like once we have that exchange, it's, it's different. See, I'm going to go out in, on the foot and say, we are in unprecedented times. And a lot of people don't want to face the truth of a lot of the elders didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Mm. A lot of the elders didn't know what, what the fuck they were doing. A lot of them were misguided. And they go through life thinking that their way is the only way. So a lot of the elders are misguiding the youth by ignorance, due to ignorance. Yeah. Thinking that, hey, this is the only way. Like you said, they won't listen to somebody young and innovative. And they got a fresh mind. They mind ain't tainted from the propaganda that they had to grow up yeah. with. You feel me? So you can learn from the youth. And you do need both generations to come with the, some type of mastermind, meeting, yeah. meeting other minds. And, okay, this is the game I got from my generation. This is the game you got. This is something that I know that you don't know. This is something that we know that you don't know. Let's put a plan together because ain't nobody plan been working. We still right. out here fighting the fight. <laughs> so, yeah. so, nigga, whatever you could preach, the Dr. Umars and the whoever's niggas is preaching to they blue in the face, but let's be real. Ain't nobody plan has concretely worked yet. You know what it is, bro? I think it's like this lack of effort. When we talk about, like, it, it requires way too much effort for understanding to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, like, the OGs gotta really put their fucking ego pride aside to understand. And vice versa. Like, I think, when I think about this concept of, like, little homies, like, my, my youngins, they, they have this, this idea that, like, if I don't have any big homies, I don't respect no big homies. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So there's not even, like, a possibility. You are guarded to the point where there's no possibility for you to respect any type of leadership, uh, guidance, um, example, none of that shit. Because... We, we, we blocked away. That's a fact. But I think that's all in the programming. And that's a whole nother conversation. Let me ask you this, because you're in the revolutionary lane in the revolutionary community. To me, even in the community, everybody has the same end game to help the betterment of the people and uplift the people and the community and blah, blah, blah. But I feel along the way, we get caught up in this, I want to be the savior. I want to be the savior. Con like, they, like it's a complex. Like, mm -hmm. Your way of saving us? Nah, fuck that. We going with my way. Even as, even at the detriment of the people in the movement. Because yeah. your way could get us there faster. But I don't want you to get the limelight and be looked at as the Messiah of saving us. So I see a lot of people in the spaces throwing dirt on each other, trying to be the first one to make it. Like, nah, we going to use my way because I want to be the one praised. And it just, we on like a treadmill. I think when we-, we No progress. Back, no, 100%. But it, it's- it's like this idea that the charismatic leader, there, there's been so many charismatic leaders in the past that we, if we can't be what we can't see, everything that we do see, all that shit that the programs that are open to us, that's the shit that we subscribe to. That's, that's the thing. I think, um, yeah, man, I, I feel like it's, it's different when, it's different when. Yeah, think on it, think on it, man, because it's, it's, it, get, it get deep, man. I'm telling you, I see it all the time. We didn't have people up here on the platform. I didn't talk with people in DMs. I didn't talk to people in real life. And it's a my way is better Olympics instead mm -hmm. of, hey, let's all figure out a way fall below to advance. You know what I'm saying? It's you running in the same race as me, trying to get us to the same finish line. But as soon as you advance, I'm going to trip you. It's the mm. crabs in a, in a barrel. <laughs> yeah, facts, facts. No, that's what it is. Everybody has to, like you said earlier, put their ego aside and work with each other to understand, you know, we need a, there's a bigger goal at hand. It requires So I think effort. a lot of times what you're saying is people want the product to be theirs. They want to be able to brand it as theirs. And so they're willing to do whatever it takes, you know what I mean, at the detriment of our people to say, hey, it was me. So I think we have to drop that ego and then we could kind of move forward. But that's something that that's a deeper conversation, right? It takes right? too much effort, bro. It, it's a lot to do. And I think there's a lot of ways that we've been trained, you know, specifically speaking on black men, how that's embedded in us in sort of a negative way to have that ego where sometimes it comes out at the worst times possible. So I think it's a it's a defense mechanism almost Hell yeah. for feeling, you know, afraid of maybe you not having that place in that revolution or, or in that, that plan or whatever it is anymore. And one more point I want to make to the black community. This is a huge problem I see. You can be a leader and still be successful for whatever fucking reason. We believe the second 
one of the leaders makes it from ground zero to success, he sold out or he sold his soul. And they don't want to take his advice no more. I see it all the fucking time. It's like as soon as somebody, let's just say we both started in the ghetto. We both started in the hood. We both started from the bottle. We both grinded out the mud. As soon as they reach success, now they looked at as an op damn near by the community. It's like we only want to champion the ones that's down here in the dirt with us. Like it, we all want to advance eventually. So why start shitting on the ones who are able to? Mm. Uh, one of my mentors, Mashan Ali, shout out Trap House Chicago. Um, he taught me this concept, below the line, above the line. What's below the line, which as humans, you know, we find ourselves below the line a lot. It's victims. This is happening to me. Villains. You guys are all wrong. I'm going to show you. And heroes. This couldn't happen without me. This is like the three that we operate in on our most of our daily lives, right? And th that's both sides that we just talked about. The the OGs, the, the young people, all, all of that. The people who don't want to relinquish power. None of that shit. Like that's the group of them. They all operate under the line. Now, above the line, that's those are the guides, right? That's the creators, challengers, and coaches. Those willing to challenge you, right? Create obstacles for you um, and coach you. Things like ultimately guiding you to use tools that you already had. Guiding you to move how you would naturally. You know what I'm saying? And we got, we got to get to that space. But that's why, like, this word effort, bro, it keeps popping up in all of my conversations. Every time we talk about this, it's like, it's the amount of effort that's required is... As specifically for like the black community. It's, it's, we can be, Dr. Umar said this shit and it was so profound. This idea of like, we can be the face of so many things, but not the face of organization, right? We can be the face of crime, but not organized crime. And why is that? Again, because it takes too much effort for us to put our pride to the side, go to the, put like, this is why we're one of the only cultures in, in our country that, only has our dollar stay in our community for three hours. Three hours, yeah. Crazy as hell. And they say we don't have an example. We have so many examples. Niggas want to talk about the Jewish people all the time. They, they're they a great example. These niggas be keeping that shit in their community for a fat ass minute. Do you get what I'm saying? The Asian community, they keep that shit in their community for a fat ass minute. But it requires too much effort. Again, we, we got to relinquish all of the shit that we have agreed to all these agreements that we've made far before our time here on earth. I'm talking about we agreed to Nike being Nike, even though that they shit on all our people, bro. We 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 watched them publicly lynch, socially lynch our, our brother fucking Kyrie Irving on TV mm, every right. single day. Every single day for saying not shit. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's just Nike, you know what I'm saying? It's Nike, so we gonna rock them. Like, nah, we gotta get to a point where our serious. voice... Like, we understand that, like, yo, the culture, the culture has created, like, the shift for everything, all movement. It, we talk about being people of creation. Like, there would be nothing with, like, every element in creation wouldn't, wouldn't take a step without the black culture. That's a fact. That, like, <laughs> every single element of life, of creation, period. You know, that they call the divine creator, the creator. Like, that we are people of creation. So, once we start, like... Once we start understanding that, I think we we move different. I think the system does the same thing. The system even knows who who they're they're working to oppress. Mm. They're working to fight a fucking god, and we can't even see ourselves as such. So we operate on peasant level. You know what I'm saying? We operate in scarcity mindset, survival mode, and the the top there again. They're just focused on. <laughs> hey man, how do you create an obedient slave? You make them believe it's their choice. Make them believe that this is. <laughs> This nope. is them. There's no greater slave than the one who doesn't even know that he's a slave. You don't even realize you're a slave. You think you're free. I call them free range chickens. You can't see the <laughs> fence. But believe me, you boxed in. That's fast. And now that we don't, since you brought up Dr. Umar, he just recently went viral. Did you see it? Yeah, I, I saw the clip. He had a debate. Mad as hell. He yeah, yelling. he was debating. He was spazzing. He went in villain mode. You feel me? Looking like a little viral out there. He was criticizing rappers saying that, you know, we have all these billionaires created from the rap game and they don't give back to the community. They don't help the community. No and he asked a question saying... He said, Jewish people own hip-hop. Jewish people own hip-hop, whatever, blah, say, blah. He said, within the 50 shit. years of hip-hop being around, what has it done for the betterment of the black community, the black culture? What institutions has it built? What schools, what hospitals? Like, what institutions has it built for the culture? That shit is the How wildest statement. That? Like, he be saying wild-ass shit. But, I mean... Again, it takes too much effort to, for him to go research that. 
You know what I'm saying? Because then it wouldn't be as confident anymore because then we see TI opening uh, affordable housing and, and uh, opening arts and culture programs in these schools. Like, we got to really do our research before we start to, to spread like hip-hop ain't really do shit. Because, again, how can we... How can we even dare to have the conversation? We, how, how connected everything is, and then say hip hop has done nothing. It's a unifier. It is a culture shifter. It's a it's a, a movement creator. You, you you know what I'm saying? Like that shit. Is, it's done so much more that human words can't even, even divine to define the divine that it does. I you know agree. what I'm saying? I think it also has lost its weight over time, and the people like how you were mentioning. You know, we have the the ability to to create and be creative. I think the people with some of the the strongest powers have auctioned them off for sale mm. to maybe the Jewish community, maybe the white community, maybe the, the the black executive who doesn't necessarily care about the culture. So I feel like while hip hop is a great unifier and it has shown, you know, people how to do certain things, talk about KRS-One, Queen Latifah in the beginning when they was really speaking, you know, to a higher mm. consciousness, but somewhere along the way, I think the profitability of it is what became bigger then the message and the culture. And so people started selling it because they wanted the profit for it, I think, and they didn't necessarily know what the repercussions were going to be. And honestly, a lot of them did not care. And so I think that's why we're at the point we are right now, where you have somebody like Dr. Umar saying, you know, what has hip hop really done for us? Um, I, you have those examples, but you also have a lot of destruction. And I think a lot of programming that maybe not intentionally has put us in a negative way, but unfortunately it has. See, my, my response to Dr. Umar with that is, he needs to do more research on programming, conscious and subconscious. Yeah. There's a reason they utilize the art form to consciously and subconsciously program destruction. So if you're going to say wow. on one hand, hey, rap has done nothing but program us to want to do drugs, kill ourselves, and blah, 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 you're acknowledging the fact that music can program a mind to make a person commit certain acts in real life. So the polar opposite to that is, if it can do that negatively, it can also do that positively. Because when rap started, it started on some revolutionary shit. We started talking about that, bro. Are we the people and fight the powers. And you saw that in the streets where it was motivating young people to get involved in these movements. So when they hijacked that and started putting money in private prisons and had that meeting in 92 saying, hey, man, we finna use this music to funnel them into prisons that we own and we gonna make money off of rap and we gonna make money off them crashing out and going to prison. So why not adjust the frequency of the music and start supporting the music that you say is gonna help us because that can motivate minds to do great things. Regardless of what you wanna say, you look to... Any type of motivational speaker. It's just words. They're just talking. Acapella. Same thing could be done on a beat. Facts, facts. With a rhythm. The same speeches. The I have, have a so dream. We have so much of it. We have so much of it. Exactly. So, yeah, that, that's some bullshit. It's, it's, yeah, it is controlled by certain entities and certain groups, but we giving that shit away. That's Come on. We can I, take it back. That's We're way, giving it away. We can take it back. The the dude he was sitting on the uh the interview with, he he made a good point as well. Like there's a difference between like the giant corporation that, you know, brands itself as hip hop and the actual culture. You know what I'm saying? There's Fact. there's a, a clear separation. And those who are disconnected from that, they'll fall for the illusion. They'll take the okie doke, they'll drink the Kool-Aid, that's cool. But niggas that's really a part of that culture, they 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 see that shit, bro. Like niggas know where the hip hop is. It's the way I see it, the way my brain retrofitted it like super quick was the legalization of weed. Like, I mean, we could go to the major corporation and buy this over expensive ass weed that, you know, might, you know, or we can go to my plug, bro, which we we know we got a good price. That's when when it went legal, the niggas niggas only went to the the dispensaries at one point just to experience what a dispensary was gonna look like. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so once it got corporate, once they shifted that, yeah. there's a Cannabis is a unifier, just like hip hop is. Yeah. Just like the culture is. It's a culture. So once that shit, once they see that it's a commodity, once they see that they can profit off of that shit, they take the human out of it. They mm -hmm. take the people out of it. They take the care out of it, right? Same thing with the healthcare system. All of it. Because when the healthcare was like, man, realistic, bro, realistic na bro. Na natural remedies. And then what? you know who bought it, took it over. The same one who owns your school the board of education. Companies. You feel me? That took away the holistic treatments and said, nah, you got to use this petroleum-filled 
pharmaceutical pills to get you addicted to make you a lifetime customer. Yeah, it's all one big, it's it's all one big motherfucking cipher to the same people that's controlling shit. I think but Dr. Umar, we... where the fuck is your school? Yeah, bro. You keep pointing fingers at this person ain't doing this. Oh, like what? This person ain't doing fuck? that. Dead homies. Where the fuck is your school? They already showed you had the funds and the resources to get the shit open. You be talking, bro. Like, I don't want to hear about you talking about these rappers no more. I just looked it up. You up about two million right now. <laughs> That's enough to go get a business loan. You know a lot of prominent people. I'm pretty sure you could put a couple hundred thousand together with your buddies and get some investors to open this school up. You try to low-key blame niggas for it not being open. Like, yeah, I tried to hire all black contractors and they was dragging their feet. I called the white boys. They came out same day. But where the fuck is the school? That means Why is it not open? Like, see, this is my thing with these activist niggas. Activists. The, the activists. Thank you. That's a good word. These activists. If there's no problem in the community, they're not making money. Mm. So a lot of these niggas be subconsciously wanting these problems to continue because what platform do you have if you can't complain about the man? Mm. If you can't complain about us being lazy and this and that? Nigga, what are you doing? You focused on Jay-Z. You focused on P. Diddy. Nigga, you go become a billionaire and help the community. Why is you waiting on the next man? Mm. Like I always say... Help yourself and you help all of us because mm. the community is built up of individuals. So if you operate at your highest form, at your highest light, at your highest power, guess what? That reflects in the community. Stop waiting on fucking Jay-Z. Stop waiting on P. Diddy. Like, he's, <laughs> this nigga crazy. Oh, he wildin'. Man, I'm just saying, Umar, holla at me, man. No, we definitely definitely need to sit down with bro because niggas got questions, man. I think that this, this... So much divisive conversation. He be saying shit from... I don't know where his sources are coming from, but shit that he don't even live in Chicago. He don't even be out there. You know what I'm saying? You're not even from here. <laughs> like, and nigga has so much to say. This nigga has so much to say about that shit, bro. Like, he had a made a comment about um the migrant community that's that's in Chicago right now. It's a whole political thing. And uh the way he was speaking was, you know, just because they're getting money, now they shouldn't get money, and we should get money. And what it does is it just further drives a wedge in this uh, black and brown unity conversation, right? How, now it's all the migrants' fault. They taking our jobs now that they got money. No, it should be like this. If a nigga walk into a store, you got a whole bunch of little kids right here, pull out a fat-ass wad of money and give tw a 20 to one kid right here, everybody else going to look at him like, you got all that money, got down? You, like, that's that's literally, this the same thing as the system. They, they be doing the same shit. And... We just got to get past that, bro. See, That's with the whole migrant thing, it's more divide and conquer. You absolutely. looking at the migrants, we all getting upset at the migrants. They're doing what anybody from where they're from would have did. If you was Take on the flip side, they take an opportunity. But you're not looking at the people allowing that opportunity and allowing, not allowing you to have the same opportunity. So instead of saying, oh, yeah, fuck them for coming over here and taking this free opportunity, going, wait a minute. We over here paying taxes. We, we over here fighting We need to point that shit at the system. The system is the one allowing them. And they got bread. I'm talking about so much bread that they they not they not even giving it to the people that live here in the country. <laughs> they giving it to all these other motherfuckers, bro. Like it's it's insane. Ants in the jar syndrome. You put the red ants and the black ants in the jar, they'll live peacefully. You shake that motherfucker up, they start fighting. You mm. shook the jar, you shook the jar. No. Pay attention to the person outside the jar that's really shaking it. That's a the bar. system, the man. Ooh, that's a I'm bar. just saying though. I fuck with that. <laughs> and Umar, one more thing. Because this is a topic I wanted to get on too. We keep trying to blame these rappers, these R&B singers, to do what the fuck these politicians mm. are supposed to be doing. It's not on the rapper to save the community. It's not on the movie star. It's not on the R&B star. It's not on the YouTuber. Even though we have people in them lanes doing great things to help in the community. We pay taxes to entities, to corporations, that this is their job. To do what you're telling a kid who sold crack in the Marcy Projects to do. Mm. To P. Diddy, who went to some random college and was producing and dancing, and you want him to save the fucking world. Like, bro, keep focus on the ones who are really supposed to be doing it. And why nobody talking about the black church? Let's get on the black church for a minute. A lot of people going to hate me for this. Bro, look at how much money has ciphered through the black church. Since 1980, they say like $460 billion. Ooh. 
And this was an article in 09. So imagine how much more millions, billions they done made from 09 to 2024. Where the fuck is that money? Yeah. That's tax free. Why does a pastor have a jet? <laughs> You're not getting on these false profit niggas? A lot of them too do get yeah, in trouble. You could, you could go on YouTube and type in pastor depositions and you'll see a lot of pastors get caught up for, for what they do. Unfortunately, a lot of people who go into religion uh, beforehand, they are running some other type of game. And, you know, unfortunately with religion, it's, it's, it's an easy thing to sell in, in the world because people want to believe in something higher. Mm -hmm. um, if you do, you do. That's cool. But most people buy into the person and not the actual, you know, higher entity. So that's why the person's able to brand their style of teaching the way they are and then become successful. It's the same thing pimps do. You know what I mean? The same thing rappers do, really. Entertainers do. They get up there, they brand themselves, and they get people to buy into it. Um, and that's really what they're doing. Uh, I mean, at the, at the demise, I feel like, of people losing faith in religion. I think, too, a lot of times with, uh, especially the black church, it's a lot of pray to the sky, pray to the sky, but then <laughs> Monday through Friday, you sit at the crib and don't do that. Yeah. So it'll be, you know, yeah. we in here, everybody hold your keys up, jingle your keys, you're going to get a new car. God going to bless you with a new car. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But then nobody goes and works the extra shift. You know what I mean? Nobody, billion? nobody does anything to, 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 to succeed. So it's almost like you praying to a false god in a way cuz you're really just praying to this man that's in front of you. Man, I I don't want to make it about the black churches. It's the churches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, cuz it's white churches the, like too. religion has created this like industrial complex. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's the religious industrial complex and they've they've made bread off of that. Um I, but in all movements, all societies, like when you look at it, uh faith and religion has been used to Manipulate has been used to exploit. It's been used to like do some of the most evil, vile shit. Like the reason I'm like, man, we t we talk about the black church all day, and so many civil rights movements happened outside of the or inside of the black church. We talk about the black church all day, and so so much empowerment of our people have come from those spaces. Ain't nobody talking about the Catholic Church. These niggas are pedophiles. <laughs> like, hold up. Like, these Got a niggas weird really case. Why is he around? Come on, bro. My, niggas. It's a fact. My thing with that. Praying. Bro, my, my thing with that is I completely understand that, you know, they have their thing and they're doing their thing. But I feel like when we speak on black culture, we should only speak on us. We shouldn't mm -hmm. look to the left or to the right and be like, well, they doing this. Well, they yeah. doing this. Well, if Jimmy but jump off a bridge, you're going to do it too. the culture itself of faith, what that is. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it has been diluted, tainted so much that like, niggas got church hurt out here, bro. No, like we, my wife and I, we have a whole congregation. It is growing. We have a, about over, a, a little over a hundred people that come every single Sunday. All young people, old people, middle aged, like it's mixed. And this is in a time where spaces of faith are dying. Our, our shit is growing exponentially. You get what I'm saying? And it's putting the human back into shit. We meditate and we read him from the Bible, the Quran, the Tao, the, or Tao, the, uh, man, the list goes on, ancient texts, because who the fuck are we to tell anybody that they're wrong? Who's, nah, right. who, who's experienced afterlife? Yeah, who's no truly not, not, you know, having amazing mental breakthroughs and all these, like, who's really talked to God, Allah, or Rahim, the universe, Dios, like, come on, who's talked to him? It's Them. Blind faith. You it's blind get what I'm faith. saying? Like, so I feel, man, when we, when we start talking about faith, uh, it, it goes back to this idea of charismatic leaders. It's, it, we're, we're past this time. This is, what, what's the bro, Todd, something Todd. Y'all know who I'm talking about? The, he's a preacher as well, and he be doing wild ass shit. He be going viral every week. And yeah. I just remember him talking about, you know, going through hard shit, and he starts spitting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wipe yeah, yeah, yeah. it on a dude's Wiping it on the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy yeah. work. Yeah. A thousand Crazy people. So that, work. that comes from the old evangelical, that, that performative style that they used to do a long time ago, falling out. Mm. It's still done now to a certain degree. But that, that shit is wild. Yeah, hey, bro. pastors low key out here molesting women in the church, talking about I can suck the cancer out your pussy, out your titties. And what? these niggas is wilding, bro. Like, bro, they use a religion that do all types of shit. The stripper? You seen the, the pastor true, in right? Brooklyn? Who who uh was walking around like a rapper, big chains on, yeah. big foreigns. Yeah. He had his boys come in and act like they robbed him, got the insurance money, gave him his chains back. 
Dumbass nigga got sent to the feds. But the reason I brought up the black church Stupid. and not church, period, because like Kali said, we got to focus on us. So if the Catholic church want to finesse their people, guess what? They ain't helping us anyway. So I ain't worried about what the fuck they I doing. I I, I'm worried about what y'all doing with the black dollar. $420 billion? Why are you looking at Jay-Z? He up how, what, two, three billion, four billion? 420. So, That's enough to, to clear good. all our societies and hit a master reset. What y'all doing with that money, though? So Dr. Umar's defense, that's one thing he did say was that if you are a mega church making $200,000 a year or more, that you should be trying to do at least some sort of food service, so some type of grocery store, some type of community uh, medical center, some type of school, some type of bank, if, you, if you're netting 200 k plus. And I, and I do agree with that because if you are netting over $200,000 a year, you know what I mean? You should be able to give a little bit to a community center here and there. It's not going to take that much. The Black Panthers used to set up, I mean, in the middle the of, you know what I mean? Program. In the middle of the street and just get it cracking. So with less money. But in the we grand scheme shit of things, with no money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so it's in the grand scheme of things, even trying to track down the money and this, that, and the third, we still missing the big picture mm. of people should be able to work an honest living and be comfortable and not have to look for anybody to save them. You should be able to go to work, make an honest day's work, make an honest wage, and take care of your family, bro. Nobody should be out. Bread is up like 123%. Like the groceries are up. Have you ever 150%? heard of 150%? It's crazy the out here. 10 point program from the Black Panthers? Yeah. It was a list of demands. Yep. And I'm talking about, bro, like some of the most clear demands thought out, like we want. Equal rights at jobs. We want reparations. We want, you know, uh, man, it was it was amazing. And again, we need to get back to what our clear demands are. Because if, like, we can, we could talk to talk about all these institutions all day, and that's what the, the the church is. The black church, that's an institution. We could talk about them all day, but if we don't have a clear like, what we need as a culture. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Demands. Mm -hmm. How do we get to that point? Where like where where are we working to? You know what I'm saying? Like. We, we got to get to that. We got to work towards that. And Man, those, that's the courageous conversation, though. That's the courageous conversation. And, and what you guys said, you know, when you talked about the church and how it's turned into this industrial thing, I mean, the, the, the main problem, what you're talking about, too, with the honest living is, is capitalism, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yes, sir. It, it's, it's naturally, inherently oppressive, you know what I mean, to, to a certain degree. Even though you have the chance for everybody to make a million dollars, is it really that likely when you have a certain system that's aimed to have things go a certain way. So <laughs> the root of it really is capitalism. I, 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 you know, We got to remember, it's, it's a system sense. created by white men with guns to protect themselves and their assets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of people refer to it as a broken system. That shit is well-oiled, <laughs> running still they want a to. system yeah, yeah. <laughs> created by white guys with guns to protect themselves and their assets. And us as the marginalized people, we suffer for it. So there's got to get to a point. We, there's got to get to a point where we, again, we, we organize enough that, that's that super amount of effort that we need to organize enough to create demands that, you know, because I feel like there's there's a space and I always get, uh, you know, get into a deeper conversation with my revolutionary homies when I say this shit. Not all of them agree, but I think there's a, a, a gray space uh, in between capitalism and socialism where if, hear me out, mm -hmm. if every, all seven necessities of life, so... Uh, education, job security, food security, um, shit like that, housing. Like if all all seven of, of of those things were free, we would actually have money and the ability to go buy shit outside. So I just you know I had a day of work and I'm tired. And this week I, my fridge is full and all this other shit. But this week I don't want to cook because you know I've, I've been working hard. Now I have money. I don't have to struggle on paying for. The, the healthcare for my kids and my family. I don't got to focus on paying for education or nothing like that or filling my fridge. I can go to this restaurant over here and sit down and feed my family. To me, I feel like that'll boost the economy. You get what I'm saying? Now we got people out here spending money because they feel confident and comfortable enough to do so because they feel safe. They're not operating on scarcity mindset. They not. You get what I'm saying? Like, But again, it, it just requires too much effort. My, my homie, he says, it is easier for us to envision the end of the world than it is a transformed one. Mm. And that shit, niggas don't want to hear that shit. Niggas don't want to turn their brain on and have the, the muscles move to think about something that has not been thought about before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Niggas don't want to do that shit. Man, stop looking for these corporations to save y'all. They make a living off you being a slave. It's an old quote. It's a powerful quote. 
Since powerful people cannot afford to educate the people that they oppress. Because once you are truly educated, you will not ask for power. You will take it. So stop looking at these people that's over you to help you. Why would I help you take the power back? I'm going to keep you a slave. Free your mind and you free yourself, period. But this is something that I studied briefly and I just thought about it like, damn, man, why the fuck generation after generation after generation, we keep falling for the same tricks. We keep going for the same okie dokes. We keep putting in the same positions, even deeper than the programming. I don't know if you guys are familiar with epigenetics, but it's been scientifically proven that trauma and certain mm-hmm. traits could be passed down for generations. I'm talking generations, five, ten generations through your DNA, mm-hmm. through your epigenetics. So you got to realize all the trauma from slavery days, from whatever days you want to go through that we, we, we went through the most turmoil, that shit's in your DNA. Oh, yeah. That shit's in your genetics. Like you might be good one day, then all of a sudden, like, damn, why the fuck am I depressed all of a sudden? Mm, yeah. Or you got a fear of some shit and you ain't got no idea why. Like my daughter, she's definitely afraid of birds. I've never been afraid of birds. Like, where does this shit come from? Since a baby, you've been afraid of birds. That's in your DNA. That's passed down generation to generation. So I'm sorry to say, shit, a lot of us is genetically fucking losers. Like, just think about that. Not, not to sound harsh and shit on this. Genetically, you had five generations of losers. Mm. Crash outs, yeah. Crash outs. You're like, damn, why this motherfucker acting like this? This motherfucker got a chemical imbalance? Yes, they really do. Not only that, a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the parents had maybe hyperactive disorder, certain things that they didn't get clinically diagnosed with at an earlier age. I, I will say it's like this set up like this, though. It's, it's the food. You know what I'm Definitely. saying? It's back to the education system. It's back to our spaces of faith. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. in every direction, it, we getting hurt. Have you ever heard of a food desert? Yeah. yeah. This idea that, mind you, a desert is natural. We call them food apartheid. Because that shit's not natural. They set it up like that. Mm-hmm. They got all of these kids going into school. I, t- I teach at, uh, uh, we, we teach at a lot of Chicago public high schools. And, um... Our kids be coming in eating hot Cheetos in the morning. That's their breakfast, bro. Like, when we talk about programming, because I agree with you. And the reason I go back to this language of programming is because even though it's passed down, we're programmed. You know what I'm saying? It's this, if this is the computer, the system that, that we booting with, that's the program. Yep. Have you guys, you guys know who Frederick Douglass is? One of my favorite stories. Frederick, Frederick Douglass was uh, an enslaved human turned politician later when he was free, which is crazy. That The flip is crazy. But, um, this one story about uh, Mr. Ald, that's his, uh, his, the, his enslaver at the time. Um, and his wife, uh, he, Mr. Ald was gone. Mrs. Ald was there with uh, Mr. Douglas. And she was teaching him how to read. This nigga Mr. Ald walks in. He's like, what the fuck? God damn, teaching him how to read. <laughs> Get mad at this, right? And then she bre- he breaks it down to her. Listen, a dumb a good that's that's how he explained it to her the more they know it's literally what you just read bro like how you broke that down that's the the whole idea of how to create how do you create obedient slaves you make them believe it's their choice so when we think about the things that we subscribe to i think it it makes sense now that our people are the way the, the way they are like the chemical imbalances that are are currently going on because we're still operating in a system that's successful you know what I'm saying? We, us, we're products of a system that's very successful. You know what I'm saying? Now, we operate a little different. We having a, the courageous conversations, but again, it's because we unks. Because now, now we've operated in so long that we've we've now realized that there, there needs to be something that's changing. We need to start having these conversations. It's why what you do is so fucking powerful. What y'all do is so powerful. You know what I'm saying? Because these conversations, this shit don't get televised. No, niggas talk right. about the revolution won't be televised because it happened in the mind first. Like, no, niggas just don't know how to <laughs> capture that shit. Yeah. N- niggas are too afraid to say that shit or we've been conditioned and programmed so much so that we believe that our voices don't mean enough that w- the shit that we talking about right now don't need to be like nah that's cool instead let's put a fucking TV show of niggas out here killing each other and shit like that that's the programming hate no, that's yourself a fact. that's a fact we gotta take control of the images that's why week after week when we had these shows we try to put out a positive image of us as people even though we have fun we troll we do other shit too but overall the overall message is be powerful. Come on. Be better than. 
uplift. You know what I'm saying? So we really got to take control of the images because images control the minds. Whatever you see, that's what kids are influenced by, the images that they see. You could talk to you blue in the face as they parent. They don't give a fuck. If that shit don't look cool, they ain't listening to that shit. Pops have been working for 40 years and you trying to tell your son, hey, you need to work an honest day's work. And he looking at you like, nigga, I don't want that life. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You got to become what people want to become yeah. to be a leader out here. Like That's why I always talk about doing the work. You could talk to you blue in the motherfucking face, but if people don't yeah, see nice. success in you, like, damn, I want to walk in his shoes. I want to walk in her shoes. Why the fuck would I listen to you? No, I'm going to go try my own route. So that's another thing we got to do. We got too many people... Preaching and this and that, and they ain't even walked the path yet. That's the charismatic leader. Nigga, you sit those... next to me on the bus. What the <laughs> fuck is you talking about? Go get a car first, then tell me how to get a car. How the fuck you tell hey, me how to get, get rich? See, sometimes, you ain't rich, though, nigga. You know sometimes, you get... though, I look at it like as a lesson still of not of what not to do. Because you could let's go to Bronx Tale for for um an example. Kind of how you said, you know, parents have to. They can talk, but if they don't do, you won't listen, right? And Sonny, um, or Kalojido, he says the working man is a sucker, right? Like that was his, that's his thing because he learns that he learns that from Sonny. But Pops tries to school him about how you know if you continue to go down this road, this is how it's going to be. And so I think that even though Pops is a is a truck driver or a bus driver, he's not as successful as as Sonny. Um, Kalojido ends up seeing exactly what not to do because he sees Sonny demise, if that makes sense. Mm. So I think sometimes the person that maybe isn't the most successful still could be a lesson on maybe what not to do. Maybe not necessarily, you it, know, how to get successful, how to get rich, but hey, avoid this pitfall because I was here. It just how we define success here. though. Like we we got to stop defining successful. By just as, monetary gain. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, because I know that there, there's some, my mentors, super successful here. I got some mentors super successful here. I got some mentors super successful with that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? The wallet. Like, I get it. And we got to redefine what that, that shit is for all of us. Because the more we don't, then we're not going to see... Example. For me, I used to look at fucking barbers like rappers, nigga. Like, those yeah, niggas. <laughs> that shit is suce yeah, successful. Bridge. If you're a good-ass barber, bro... Niggas is up. <laughs> like, you... You, 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 money. you fucking Tell the me. baddest you, single baby mamas. Yeah. You, you got to go... <laughs> Look, two hour haircut. Oh with God! Truck driving. Cracking. If you own a truck, what? Hey, that is success, bro. Go yeah. fucking crazy. And we need to start. We we need to start amplifying that shit way more. Because this idea that again, we we said it earlier. We only subscribe to what is given to us. So if that that bag is rappers, motherfucking ball players, you got to go to the workforce. You got to motherfucking uh, go to the army, which is wild as hell. They be bro, fucking galvanizing black and brown kids like. Gaining them, getting them all in the army to go fight for a country that don't even give no fuck about them, bro. Like, th if this is the only buckets I can go into, this is all I believe. I cannot be what I can't see, or I'm gonna get protected by the the gang, the street tribe. You get what I'm saying? That's that's what it is. And those are the only buckets that we subscribe to because we don't gas nothing else up. We don't. It's it's time to start highlighting the other places that we can make money in. You know what I'm saying? Because again, we got more examples. <laughs> and you know, this is a little it's a slippery slope because. Uh, I got some uh, some Asian friends who, you know, I, I've been uh, pushed to be a doctor all my life or pushed to be da 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 and I don't want to do that shit. There's other jobs out there. So like, I understand that. And and there's a list of jobs that, you know, the parents be pushing them into. We need to start doing that shit with our kids, bro, specifically in the black uh, community. I agree. I 100% agree. But And I think there's already examples out there, but those are not the examples that are praised, right? Like, I think in yeah. a lot of times from a, from an early age... You could take from the kid in the front of the class compared to the kid in the back of the class. The kid in the front of the class get clowned on, right? He gets called the know-it-all or the nerd or the dork. The dude in the back of the class, maybe who's doing the spitballs, whatever the case is, he might be more uh, revered at school. He might have more bitches at the lunch table. He might have more homies. I think at a younger age, from a young age, we learn that if we do bad, we get praised more than mm. if we do mm. good. So I feel like that's what starts to trickle down as to why, okay, I'm going to go do this instead of do that. Because look at bro over here. He's cool, but he ain't really got no bitches. His clothes, you know, you know what I mean? He might not have a swag. He might not have the bravado that is very important in our culture. That's one of the number one things that we lead with. So when you're looking at it, yeah, we could put these people on all day, but it's not an attractive thing. 
even though I feel like to a lot of us, because it doesn't have the certain look I, I, that, that we want in our culture. I this think that's idea more of, like some movie shit, though. Like, I'm but just that's the back programming. When I was in nigga, school, that's the bro, program. That's where I was. Doing. Niggas wasn't just picking on the nerds. Like, oh, I'm not, and I'm nerds. Not saying, like, I'm not saying no, no, no. I know, no, yeah, I know what yeah, you're yeah. saying. It's not attractive, but just the movies that make it seem that way, like Revenge of the Nerd type shit. Like, mm. nah, we actually was on niggas who was picking on the nerds. Like, nigga, it's niggas out here in the field who signed up for this Hunger Games that we playing. Why are you picking on him? You don't get no cool points. So a lot of the street niggas was protecting the nerds. A lot of the jocks and the football players was protecting the nerds. But in the movies, you'll think we were stuffing these niggas That's in lockers. The like, that shit wasn't really going on like I, that. I think we've been we've been conditioned with this, this another program, you know, applications. We got a whole fucking iPhone app, like programming. We, we've been conditioned with this idea that what is healthy for us is for white people, right? We don't say truth is for white people. We say snitches get stitches. We, we don't say motherfucking, uh, you know... Uh, education is for white people. We say, nigga, I ain't no nerd, nigga. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, it's it's levels to this shit, and it's all like disguised within the language and the programming. Because the more we see, ain't no smart niggas. Like, bro, we've been in rooms where motherfuckers just because of our complexion, just because of our complexion, we're no longer valid to the conversation that they're right. having. We're not intellectual enough. Let's, we let's, talk about that all the time. Let's take nerd out of it. Let's say class clown. So a lot of times a class clown will be smart, right? But mm -hmm. he will be the class clown just because you get more, um, I feel like, eyes on you. You get, you get more affirmation from being a class clown instead of the person who tries to go to, you know, the more quiet, maybe straight and narrow way. And I feel like that is a theme within our culture. But a lot of that be personality traits too, though. Some people is naturally reserved and quiet and introverts, yeah. and some people is naturally super social and rambunctious and outgoing. So it ain't necessarily always like... Oh, he's a class clown. It's like, no, we have people who their personality is too big for a classroom to be sitting here for eight fucking hours. That's true. They 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 gotta let it out somehow. You That's feel the, me? So, and that that gets into the deeper conversation of the differences between black and brown education and the affluent white communities. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's so many differences. Uh, these niggas got fucking gardens and uh all types of music and arts and culture programming and stretching days and stretching moments and periods where they, you know what I'm saying? At school, it's a prison. I just took them over to my middle school. I went to uh, Rogers and it's, it looks like a prison, G. Like, nigga. I, I, pipeline to prison on God. Bro, uh, what? Metal bars on the, on, the, on the window. I went to Mary Butler on the east side, right across the street okay. from, from, uh, King, from King's Park. Mm. That shit looked like a prison. It was yeah, all was cement, prison. no <laughs> color, straight metal fences up. Looked like a straight prison. And look at the population of how many kids who went there went to prison. Because I was one of them. So it's the pipeline, pipeline to pipeline, prison, absolutely. for sure. This, oh, God. Man, that shit is... It, it gets deep. It gets deep. But just to touch back on success, it's subjective. The world gives us visions and images of what success is supposed to be deemed. But let me just ask you, what, what do you believe the purpose of life is? Mm. We're born on the earth. We're guaranteed to die. The journey in between is whatever you choose it to be. So that, who's that, to tell you what success is? Mm. This little, this studio, this could be somebody's dream. And they're successful. But somebody who own a Tyler Perry compound could be looking at your dream like it ain't shit. Yeah. Because that's what he aspired to get. But to you, you happy. You gotta, I'm good. You got to be content. So it's subjective. You got to be content I think with your success. That's sub, like every, every word that we could talk about that's subjective, there's that individual meeting, meaning, and then there has to be a communal understanding of yeah. what that word is. That's the same thing like when we talk about uh, freedom. What is freedom? Freedom will change for every single person that you ask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> every revolutionary that you ask, that, that shit will change. You know? So when we sit down and we have these conversations that allow us to operate or just, uh, you know, visit another person's thought house, bro. Like, I'll be able to understand what freedom is a bit more and we can define that together. More, more importantly, we can make agreements that foster this understanding, this communal understanding of what freedom is. And we can get closer to it. You know what I'm saying? But if we're not willing to, because I think if a lot of us operate in that, you know what I'm saying? What it is to me, what success is to me. And again, understanding <laughs> requires too much effort. Niggas don't want to like, if if your version of success isn't what I'm expecting or I need or what I want, 
I don't want that shit. I don't even want to understand it. I don't even want to visit it. <laughs> like, niggas don't even want to be over there. Like, you're basically talking about agreements. Yeah. So the world is built up on agreements. That's 100%. the point I always make to people. Like, really just sit down and think. The way we operate in society is literally because the majority agrees. So generalities uh. matter. So basic, uh, I mean, for the most part, <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the most part, we agree money is valuable and it's valuable. But really, in, in essence, it's a piece of fucking paper. You know what I'm saying? So the, if you take a penny, the material on a, uh, of a penny is worth more than paper. But because we wrote 100 on this paper, we agree it's worth more than the penny. It's ball. just a fucking agreement. So life is built up on agreements. And unfortunately, we all ain't going to agree. This is why what you said is pivotal. Man, we got to come to some understanding in the middle of what we both believe. And okay, in general, this could be the rule. Yeah, there's exceptions on both sides, the extremes on both sides. But for the most part, majority of people agree with this. And that'll keep society going. But when you have the minority making rules for the majority mm -hmm. and the majority disagrees, that's which what is what we is, have right? now, that's where you get the chaos. What do y'all think the black community's picture of success is? What do you it, think, what do you think, you know, the majority of black community or culture would consider, okay, this is success. Rapper, think, ball player, influencer. I was just going to say, it's, it's whatever the buckets <laughs> that were given to us. Again, we are the products of a system that was successful. Whatever that system laid out in front of us, that's what success is to a lot. Of, and I'm talking about, and this is me speaking as majority. This is me speaking as like, you know, a lot of what I'm hearing from my young people. This is what I'm hearing from the streets. Like, success is those buckets. How do you Influencers think we, added to that bucket today. You know what I'm saying? How do you think we get from for kids or for people to put more of a shift of focus onto the things like doctors, lawyers. Value. Speaking on. Um, one of my mentors, we don't have a violence problem. Now in Chicago, that sounds crazy to say something like that, right? We don't have a violence problem. We got a value problem. If our kids don't value themselves, what the fuck is going to make them value somebody that look like them? More importantly, what the fuck is going to make them value somebody that don't look like them? You, you know what I'm saying? So if we can get to this point where we empower them, we value them. I'm talking about, we, we talked about Dirk. We brought him up earlier, whether this is fake or not, to see a, a, a young nigga like break down in church. Niggas don't cry, quote unquote. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't go to it. church. Like all of these things, that, that one little ass video. If you know you got influence, that's dope, bro. That's, that's super dope. And like on a personal level, if that's not real, that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And if it is, that's raw. Go crazy. And I'm glad that you're using your influence to at least push push our people in a space that's healthy for their mindset. You get what I'm saying? Because right now, niggas are fighting. They're killing themselves. Bro, they talk about, we it, we going through something called op culture right now. It's op culture. They sliding on niggas that look like them. Killing niggas that look like them. I'm a revolutionary. So I, I'm seeing all of my young people harboring, harboring pain, anger, resentment, all of this crazy shit. And like, if y'all so angry, who the fuck gonna slide on the niggas who killed Chairman Fred, who who shot Martin, you know what I'm saying? Who shot Malcolm? Who sh like, nigga, we got hella niggas to slide on. And here yeah. you are, sliding on niggas that look just like you. It's, bro, we're infected with that shit. And it's because nobody is feels valued enough. I'm seeing niggas like, bro, Chicago, one of my students, mind you, my students, young, you know what I'm saying? Nigga was 16 years old and got pulled up on by somebody who was younger than him. Empty this shit, bro, like... It's crazy. It's crazy. They, they, there's no value for life. There's no value for self. How can I value life when I don't get no fuck about myself right now? I'll say this, though. To We always like to big up the squares and talk down on the rappers. Let's be real. Who's really coming out to the communities and talking to the communities and trying to uplift the kids and trying to motivate them? Whether they're doing it in a way you agree or not, let's be for real. The people who are in these spaces that we call negative, like rap, these niggas the only ones coming back talking to the youth, period. Where the, where the fuck are these lawyers? Where are these doctors? Like, do, are you meeting these people in real life? Most of these people, they get successful. They don't want nothing to do with this shit no more. They in a new space, and this is the only space they operate in. So I give kudos to the rappers, the ball players, because these niggas, whether we agree with their lifestyle or not, they're the only ones starting these charities. Yep. They're the only ones coming down here, putting money in the community. 50 just had a, a concert in Shreveport. He moved his studio out there. That's providing jobs for a lot of people. That's providing opportunity for a lot of people in a market that's dirt, that it ain't no opportunity. Where are these lawyer niggas at? Where are these doctors? Where are these nerds? Where are they coming back 
giving TED Talks to the kids, coming to the schools, giving out back, like anything. You don't see these niggas, but yet we always champion these niggas. Who? I, hey, my shout out to Grace Legal Group. They just had a a, a toy drive in Compton, and they just uh, homie just pulled up on a, a little school tour uh, within Los Angeles and, and talked to people about law. Um, they also help people that look like us. You feel me? Get out of situations with the law. So I think it's just again, it's not championed enough. It's not looked at when you got when you have a rapper coming through to the hood and doing that. Of course, it's gonna be more popular popularized than a lawyer dude who pull up. So it, I, in my opinion. It's happening. There's there's definitely people who are not rappers and, and you know what I mean, actors and, and sports people that are out there giving back to the community. It's just they don't have a hundred thousand or a million followers where it's like, I'm out here and everybody's seeing it. Yeah. I don't know, man. There, when I was a kid, I didn't see none of these niggas. Like when the game trucks came to the block, it was the rappers bringing the motherfuckers or the, or, or the or, or the city parks or when they had these celebrity baseball games and basketball games. I will also games. say- and correct me if I'm wrong, but niggas wasn't looking for him. You know what I'm saying? I, I go back to that champion thing. That too. And um, like for me, I we just did a, a big ass event. Uh, shout out to one of my mentors, Corey from Inglewood Branded. And uh, he brought out a bunch of black lawyers, brought out a bunch of barbers, brought out a bunch of, um, this is a bunch of amazing things going on. And uh, it went from music. We had a uh, um, three-time platinum recorder artist, D-Lo out there. He, he did some songs, had the, the kids out there moving. D-Lo. And then um, right after, the doctors came out and started speaking. And when I tell you, it was just like, oh, this shit boring as hell, man. I don't want to do that. And it's, how do we get to a space of making that cool? Because it has to be cool. That's the uh, it has to be you cool. You got to learn to connect like, with the people, man. That'd that be a big problem. But that's why it's the, on the artist, though. Spaces, you get what I'm saying? Though. It's the role of the artist to make the re revolution irresistible. My thing with that- And is we like, can't expect these lawyer niggas to do that shit. That's what I'm saying. We can't expect the doctor niggas to do that shit, bro. So it's on the, the culture shifters, the Not culture for sure. creators, bro. We, like, we the ones that shift the world, period, point blank. It's, it's in a negative space because who controls it, but we can take the control back and shift it to where we need to be. We keep asking how we make it popular. Nigga, the same way we make that shit popular. We make this shit look good as a motherfucker. What? Make that success look good as a motherfucker and kids gonna wanna follow you. But, but yeah, we're running out of time though. I'm gonna let you make your final point and I'm gonna let my boy promo his everything he got going on and we gonna get up out of here. I mean, you look at a doctor, right? And he pull up and I mean, they gonna have a nice car. They're gonna be dressed well. They're gonna have money. It might not be as flashy as them. So I feel like, I mean, how much cooler could it get than being making, you know, at a at a base level, maybe it's not you're not rich as hell, but you're making two hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars a year doing surgeries, or you're a lawyer. I don't understand how, like, what more does they do they have to do to be cooler? And then we speak on a connection thing, but why do I have to look exactly like you mm. for you to try to connect to me? I feel like just me being black, you being black, me being somewhere you want to be. Should be enough for you to open up we to a certain degree and do that. And, and try Hell to no, nah, you gotta think of you when you, you was a what kid. I'm I, when, I, when I was a kid, I didn't necessarily, I didn't necessarily connect with them, but it wasn't like I would never listen to them. Man, niggas that's ain't. I'm, I'm just that's saying, as a kid, see, we adults now, so we think it from a different mind frame. Think back to when you were a kid, kid. and who you that's idolized funny. and looked up to. <laughs> was you yeah, looking so, at Akbar I, who I'll came out this. of Kaiser Permanente with the motherfucking hocus <laughs> on, talking about, hey man, stay in school. What the fuck is the bullshit on your feet? Man, get the fuck out of nah, here. Nah, but I feel oh, like you next year. But what I'm oh, saying God, is that when you sitting on the couch, when you life passing by. Come on, gang. Look at the examples, or when you look at what's going on in the community. Okay, so what what else do we say after that? Because if a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, then then how are they able to ever connect? That's my it's, thing. Because it it takes how are true you effort, it? bro. It takes true effort. I, I did an event. Um, my wife put uh, she she does this thing with uh public defenders, right? The PD's office, and we get community together to figure out how the PD office could do better at serving the community because that's what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We had this young man, bro. I, I get chills when I think about this shit, bro. I'm talking about niggas was wearing suits. I got all of these, and then we got young people in here like, who the fuck is these niggas? And so when we start having this conversation, this young, young, young dude stood up and he wasn't the most articulate, but he said the most important shit. He said, bro, we don't trust y'all niggas. You know what we call the PDs over here? Penitentiary deliverers. And that's the trust we got for y'all niggas. And he sat down. Public pretenders. Bro, when I, I got chills, bro, I was like, yo, that. That was the realest shit that was said in this meeting. The realest shit. 
So if that right now, if the trust is broken, you can't just come up in this motherfucker because the, the way bro got there was uh, the the boss dude, he, you know, he had his suit on, he had his watch on. He was like, you know, look at me, I'm a nigga, bro. And I'm up here for y'all. That's that savior shit. Look, six, That's that charismatic nah, leader. Nah, we don't fact. need that shit. We need relatability. We need empowerment. But we don't, we don't need niggas trying to flex on us. And that We had all of that shit from the system for too long. You want to lead the people, you got to connect to the people. I'm y'all sorry think, to say. Y'all think but hold on, look, in 60 seconds. Trying to flex on people? No, I don't think that. I think that there's, there's an, an energy oh. to it. Absolutely. I think because you they've think strived so hard. That? Huh? You guys don't think rappers try to do that? Hell yeah. Of course. That whole, that whole image of course. Is about flexing but on back to what you said, niggas are still out here in the hood, coming out, pulling up, giving out free shoes. Get like... They're willing to do the job of connecting before they start to impl- like implement other things to the the resources. They're they're willing to connect with you first. They know that we give a fuck about fashion right now. We give a fuck about creation right now. We give a fuck about like we we give a fuck about all those things so that they they're gonna try to implement that before they even try to flex on you, bro. Like I think social media is a, a whole nother thing, right? We not talk about that, but when it comes to like us being ten toes down in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. Listen, like, visibility matters too. If I'm a kid in middle school and I'm looking for someone to look up to, I don't see no doctors. What I do see is these rappers, these ball players. I have accessibility to them via YouTube, via they on Instagram showing me their lifestyle. So if you want to be a leader, things? make yourself more accessible. Maybe some of these doctors got to start getting on the gram and making it look good. But they own there. And that's where? What, that's what I'm saying. Are we looking for them? Up, we're not looking I'm, I mean, where? I just think that we're still at a point in time where and I, I, I understand what y'all are saying, but we're at a point in time where we're, we either have to just focus on it and make an effort, like you say, to focus on it, or it's not going to happen. Because you do have, maybe not in every single hood, but I think you have doctors, you have lawyers, you have community outreach programs and all these things of people who are trying to do better for the kids, but kids aren't necessarily taking advice. It might be going through one ear and out the other. So if somebody set up shop for a month and niggas come in there and then they don't do what they're supposed this to do This is the problem. We literally deal with this. Look, 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 look. We how, are literally completely we, out of time. In 60 seconds. I know it just got good. God damn. It, it always happened like this too. As soon as we get intense, run out of time. Look, in 60 seconds... Give me your take on what the solution to that problem could be. In 60 seconds, goddamn. From both of y'all. So for me, I and this is what we deal with in Chicago currently is this idea that charity without politi- political education is a pacifier. A lot of people are focused on charity. You know, I'm out here, I'm trying to get free shit out, but you're not trying to sit down and actually be in the community, educate on why this charity is important, educate us on how to use the charity. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you're giving us money, we just gonna spend the money. You didn't tell me how to spend this money. You didn't tell me what investment is. Like, there's, I think the the clear destination is connection. And if we can get to connection, we can focus on all of the growth after that. You feel me? So I think you're right. There are doctors out here, but it requires too much effort outside of just the charity. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So we need to get further than the charity. We got to get past that because once motherfuckers stop looking at themselves. Because, again, oppressed people believe the worst of themselves. Once we get out of that space, like, then we're willing to get there. But we got to feel empowered by these people, man. We got to feel valued by these people. You coming in and trying to save some shit and give me some shit. We passed that, bro. I feel like, for me, we just, as black kids and black parents, we have to push our kids to look at this stuff and make conscious decisions to look at the doctor and the lawyer from earlier on because the rapper and the, and the, and the doctor are doing the same thing. The rapper is not necessarily giving you any more words of wisdom than this person is giving, he's giving the same charity that that the doctor's giving. They're both giving free shit or whatever the case is. And then maybe at that point, what are you saying? All right, do your thing, stay up. You know, they're both doing the same thing. So I think that we have to push parents to push the kids to look at it more that way. Because mm-hmm. to me, they're doing the same thing. It's just, who do we like to look at more? We like to look at the rappers and the, and the ball players more. And we look to, like to look at them less. That's how I look at it. It has to come some accountability on us. We can't no, no, be, definitely. Like, and again... When it comes to how somebody looks, if I'm willing to sit down and have a conversation with you, whether if I'm from Carlton from Bel Air and you will from Philadelphia, if I'm willing to look at you in your face as a black man and say, let's have a conversation, then there shouldn't have to, there should be no visual barrier at that point. Damn, I and, I, we, I and I think that black people are too focused on the visuals of everything instead of necessarily what could come from within. That's, Boy, barring up, and I hate that we out of time because... Man, I got a good question. <laughs> All that shit sound good in retrospect, but we missing one key aspect. 
a lot of our parents are fucking idiots. Yeah. So we sitting here talking about, man, we got to push the kids to do this and do that. Your parent barely could push you to school. Your mom is a fucking idiot. Your dad's a fucking retard. They don't have no education. They came up with no education. They don't know what the fuck they talking about. Bro, I went to an open house. Not far from my house. Asian family. I swear to God, this fucking kid, probably no older than five, had more books than maybe m most adults I know. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about bookshelf, 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 bookshelf. And I see how they get the mass amount of success because from an early age where this kid is barely talking, they in the books. You go to our people house, what we got? iPads, yeah, video man. games. So their parents, this is generationally passed down. Yeah. Generation after generation after generation. We're expecting a generation of idiots to somehow become geniuses now. So this well, got to go back to slavery, bro. From the top to the bottom. Epigenetics, this, this shit be passed down, man. <laughs> hey, where can they find... <laughs> <laughs> we gonna get back into this shit, man. Let them know where they can find you, gang. We gonna talk about this. Follow me on shit. everything, Chairman underscore underscore Allen. Um, I got an album drop in September twenty seventh. Okay. Poster Boy, Anatomy of American Negro. That's what we talking about, man. Literally all of the things that uh that we're programmed with. So look at that. That's gonna be on all all streaming platforms. You can purchase the album right now in my bio. Um, on the even platform, go go support that. That's a proud to pay thing. You know what I'm saying? Support the Brody, man. Support the Brody. And you got an event coming up tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. Tomorrow, yeah. Art Battle Global. We out partnered there. by Sharpie. Come on, we out there. We might be a little late, but we out there. Come on, <laughs> gang shit. Viral wave. We out of here. Hey y'all, raw. Bang. Hey. Ain't no handouts. I did it from the ground up. Yeah. In the streets, dug and hardest where they found us. Exactly. Got a problem, nigga. Watch my troopers mount up. My bitches bang too, and you a lame though. Niggas ain't outside, yeah, we came through. You want your lights up, we put you on the shack.